And I think basically everyone is kind of getting had the same problem for a while. And so they're looking at their own unique ways to kind of combat that. So if you've had any experience going on to the different trading platforms, you can see that some of them have really great features and other parts of it are not the best. So with Lunar, our goal is to, one of them anyway, is to make it to where somebody that doesn't know a whole lot can come in and educate themselves. They can use the systems. They understand what they're doing. They don't have to worry about accidentally, accidentally transferring ETH to, you know, the BNB chain, things like that. Um, we just want everybody to have the same access as everybody else in a way that they can understand. Yeah. But do it in a way that is very user-friendly, um, easily adapted. You know, we can go in and make changes if needed, things like that, um, having those different kinds of utility. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Renix, you were saying, yes, definitely. So as far as the blockchain went, uh, it's definitely good news for, for crypto. Um, it's just showing that there's already a well-established uh, country um, showing the support. So I think that's great. I actually still have my pamphlet and stuff. I'll have to look too, and I can post it later. Um, let's see. Anything else in main chat that you guys kind of wanted me to go over? Hey, what's up, folks? Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Jedi. <laughs> Sorry about that. I I took a nap. You know what? And Short naps. I forgot to set an alarm. <laughs> I forgot to set an alarm, and I was I woke up and I was like, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing something at two o'clock. <laughs> it's not on my calendar for some reason. And then I saw the message. Hey, we're we doing the email. I was like, <laughs> no worries. Um, I was just catching up with some questions and we would love <laughs> for you to go over the tech side of things. I kind of just read over the updates and, you know, I was like, if you guys have anything tech specific, go ahead and do the questions in AMA. But luckily, you, you know, you came in is fashionably late. <laughs> so <laughs> Fashion, yeah. Fashionably um, late. Yeah. Anurag, I'm doing much better. I still am having a little bit of like, as you can hear in my nose and like my chest, I'm still having a little congestion, but for the most part, I'm doing much better. Um, the other oh, NFTs I'm at the summit. Thank you so much. Um, professor was asking what we thought about the other NFTs at the summit. So some of the art was, it was honestly, it was unique and it was eye catching and it would draw you in, and then you would go to scan the QR code, and it would take you to a broken website, or it would take you to a login that you don't have credentials for. So overall, um, ours, honestly, if I hadn't been part of the team and I had to just come in off the street, I would have said that ours is, was definitely the best one. Um, there was another one that was really, really interesting. Uh, it had like a smoky cloud background and it had a 3D sort of um, cube in the middle and it looked really cool. But when we went to scan it to get for more, more information, uh, it was broken. So we couldn't even look up uh, who it was by. We couldn't do any of those things. So it was definitely, ours was definitely the most impressive. Right on, that's good news. Yeah. So. Um, I think every time one of us would go out there uh, to kind of, you know, mingle or anything, there was always someone in front of our, our display kind of checking it out. There you go. Thanks, Renix. That was the one. See? Cloudy with a, a cube. <laughs> yep. So it was, it was definitely interesting. Um, it was, there was a diverse group of people there. Oh, oh. It, is, it is technically a diamond, a square on its side. My bad. <laughs> Um, anything else on my side that I could answer before Jedi gets into the, the cool part? <laughs> Let's see. Um, I think they're good, Jedi. I think they're ready to hear the fun part. Let me mute myself. Mm -hmm. I was telling them earlier the there was a fire at the house across the street from mine, and so they are demolishing it, so I have some background noise. So 
but they said they couldn't hear it too badly, so that's good. Lord. Let's see. That's crazy. I know. So I will go ahead and let you get started, Jedi. Appreciate you. All right. Appreciate you so much. Um, a lot of them have to do with all the technical things needed to get the market maker up and running um, and working on the contract stuff and uh, Lunar Mint uh, all at the same time. So as you can imagine, it's been uh, pretty crazy over here the last few weeks. Um, so you have the market maker stuff all set up and working. Um, I was just uh, checking on uh, how we've been doing uh, today. Um, things have been going well on that front. And then... Um, And then um, the the primary thing we're focused on right now is um, getting the updates to the contracts spun up and out the door. Um, the big uh, challenge that we always have with um, the the especially the ERC twenty contract is it is scary as all get out to um, do anything to that contract. Um, the the more discussions that I've been in this year, the more <laughs> that I've learned that the kind of locking the pink sale contract and or the pink sale liquidity in some ways has um, harmed us more than it has helped us this year. But um, we needed to do it to give you folks some uh, sense of stability uh, through the transition. But it's it's made certain things more difficult to deal with. One of those things being like it raises the stake for contract updates and we cannot under any circumstances screw that up. So that means we do a lot, a lot, a lot of testing on other contracts in the ecosystem. So we, uh, we deploy test contracts on the test net. We deploy test contracts on the main net under a different name. Um, we test the crap out of them, um, and we've been uh, working on uh, adding, I think we're adding exchange wallets and adding a uh, development wallet to the tax calculation so that um, we can uh, make sure you folks know what the developer uh, tax looks like and what the developer budget is uh, for the for the software team. Um, the core challenge in doing that is that the um, the uh, the the structures, the data structures used on the contract for storage, um, are were like set up specifically not to include a develop, not specifically set up not to, but they didn't have the developer wallet in there. And so if you think about storage on uh, ERC-20 or on a, just a smart contract, especially on uh, EVM-compatible chains, it's like, um, I guess the best way to describe it would be like, um, if you remember uh, in elementary school, um, when you'd go to the front office and the teachers would have their mailboxes, and everybody would have a slot in the mailbox and have a label on it that says their name. Um, if you go in and change an existing data structure, then uh, each memory space on the structure is like a slot in a mailbox. And the data is going to stay in the same slot no matter what. But if you like add something in the middle, then it changes the name but it doesn't move anything that's already in that mailbox and it shifts everybody else's labels down and it, it basically changes everybody's mailbox without changing what's in the mailbox. And so we had this kind of corruption issue for a little while that we were trying to work out and how do you structure this new data change in order to, um, in order to like make it work. 
And so we've been trying to work on in that is our desired structure is a little more extensive uh, than we'd like to recode for right now. And so um, we came up with a with a structure in the middle uh, that we're comfortable with and that we've just been testing the hell out of it uh, back and forth, back and forth until uh, until we get it right. And so uh, we've gotten it right. Um, we've had it tested. Uh, we went through our first pass on the um, audit. Uh, we remediated some issues and clarified a few uh, portions of how the contract works. And then uh, we had it uh, had somebody take a second pass at it. And uh, so it's been uh, cleared for the audit. We should have another audit document generated, I believe, before the end of the day. And then once that happens and we're good to go, the team and I are going to sit down um, with the foundation and try to plot out a, um, a, a day that the contract is going to get updated. Um, because on this update, we do have to pause the contract for like for no more than five minutes, um, if possible. Um, but because the development wallet won't have been initiated when the contract update is completed, we have to run some commands on the contract to do it. If you try to execute a transaction on the contract during that time, it will fail. So um, we're going to find a time uh, where there's usually a break. Um, the market's relatively predictable at the moment in terms of like how active the contract is. And so uh, we're going to do it in the middle of a break, uh, pause the contract for three to five minutes, get the updates done, get it tested and get them out the door. Um, the risk in that is because the there's a, still a pink sale lock. If something does get messed up, then um, the liquidity in the DEX could be locked and we could not get access to it for another year. So the stakes are relatively high um, <clears throat> and we can't wait another year to do this update. So um, <clears throat> so we're going to test the crap out of it. We're going to make sure we're ready to go. We're going to do it. And then um, when it comes up on another year, um, I, as a, as the technical advisor on the team, is going to recommend to the DAO that we, if we do continue to lock it versus just keeping it on a uh, Genosis safe, um, that's a multi-sig, um, that we will lock it for shorter periods moving forward so that if something like this happens, or if something bad were to ever happen on the contract, that we're not... Uh, locked out for an extended period of time. Um, if anything, it should be locked for no more than a month, and like we extend locks every month or something like that. But we'll figure that out in a year, <laughs> in December, when the lock comes up again. So uh, between now and then, not really anything we can do about it. Uh, we're continuing to work through uh, exchange listings. Um, as you folks have seen so far, we've been able to do one a week for the last few weeks. Um, would be amazing if we could continue some sort of pace along that realm, but it really just depends on when we get approved for things. So um, we've continued to apply for exchanges. Um, we've put together a ton of information on how much it actually costs to get listed on uh, centralized exchanges, and hopefully we'll be able to report on that kind of thing here soon. And um, and then uh, once the contract is updated, um, our market maker is going to start working on the driving volume on the uh, DEX as well, on PancakeSwap and on the contract. So uh, don't know if you folks have seen, but over the last uh, 48 hours, uh, we've been uh, driving volume up over a million dollars a day which is fantastic. The market maker is hard at work trying to generate a, a market for us, um, which is great. Uh, apologies for <clears throat> not having that article uh, that I talked about yet about why a market maker is important. 
Um, we've just had a lot of technical things uh, we've been working on uh, trying to get this contract update out the door uh, because the market maker wants to work on uh, both fronts. Um, but we're we're driving forward on um, just as many areas as we can. Uh, we just uh, published to beta our first uh, service uh, in support of uh, our uh, accounts on uh, CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko. So um, for those of you that don't know, um, we we have to provide a um, an API that outlines how much supply is available in the ecosystem. And um, up to this point, um, in the in the eco in like crypto in general, usually companies will p take uh, Fiverr and um, like just have somebody maintain a service for you and spin it up. And um, the challenge with that is you have to like stay in contact with them if you change wallets. Um, somebody else is managing it manually. It's a huge pain in the butt. Um, we have added to the um, uh, database the ability to uh, maintain those wallets and that service ourselves. Um, so I'm very excited about having something online uh, that's going to keep our APIs alive at all times. Um, we'll be working on making sure uh, that data is cached on a 24-hour basis. Um, and uh, supporting our listings uh, more frequently. So I'm excited about what that means. Um, and uh, we're <coughs> busting our butts trying to wrap up uh, Lunar Mint Manager. So um, everything that's needed, uh, Lunar Mint for creators uh, to be able to um, get uh, these, a or these NFTs out the door that we've owed the community for so long, and then uh, leveraging that to be able to get uh, our first creators on the platform and run something manually. Um, we're hoping to do that soon. Um, we'll have more specifics on dates uh, when we get towards uh, locking in a release. Um, but we're trying to get that done as quickly as possible. Um, not seeing any um, major blockers in that process. Um, we've done a lot of work consolidating the uh, code base and the ecosystem to be able to handle these different apps that we've been spinning up um, and making it easier to manage um, and uh, driving forward on uh, on uh, testing. So um, I think that's about it for me in terms of um, where we're at on um, on technical things. Happy to answer any questions. Uh, in that realm, digging through um, the AMA to see if there were any technical questions in there that I can answer. Um, I think I want to mention um, and there are a couple of questions about DeFi and Lunar DAO compared to other DeFi platforms and, and what's going on in the market. Um, I think it's really um, interesting what's happening in the banking space right now um in another life i uh i have a, a bank account at silicon valley bank and um and a company that that used to do business through there i got to see uh what happened over the weekend firsthand um i don't think that is the end of this process uh you saw 40 billion dollars change hands in one day uh trying to get money out from one bank to another um the thing about decentralized finance that just reinforces that it's the future is you may have a run on an individual contract but there's there was not a run on the ecosystem uh, when ftx fell there was not a run on the ecosystem as a whole when uh this happened. Um, I think that the uh, U.S. Um, uh, policy right now is uh, very heavy handed and detrimental to the crypto space. And I think that um, uh, it, it appears from what I've been reading that the signature bank 
uh, failure um, had a it was not a broken bank. It was not a um, was not uh, it was properly capitalized. But um, the federal government was sending a message uh, to shut it down as a crypto friendly bank, and it was under investigation um, for being crypto friendly. So I think you're going to have this uh, this massive trust failure in banks. Um, I personally find it very interesting that um, the entire banking system is based on um, being able to uh, take your money in your bank account and leverage it to offer loans for uh, mortgages and crap like that. The entire banking system is founded on being able to take depositors' money and leverage it in other ways. Um, yet uh, SBF couldn't do that with FTX. Now I don't agree with anything that FT uh, that SBF did. Um, I don't agree with anything about how he ran that company. It's no surprise that in the crypto space there was no documentation, there was no process because he went from zero to several billion dollar market cap in, in basically no time. And so that pro that doesn't lend itself well to building structures uh, for uh, maintaining good records. It just doesn't um, because there's not enough time to build the company uh, when you've turned into this big thing. I don't think building a solid company was ever his intention anyways. Um, and he had no experience doing it. Um, but I do find it very, very interesting that he was not allowed to use customer funds to be able to build out uh, the ecosystem, but banks are. Um, it's a double standard that frankly needs to go away. Not that um, crypto companies should be able to leverage customer funds, but that I don't believe banks should. If you've deposited your money in a checking account, then it, nobody should be messing with it. Um, and that's the value of crypto, right? On when you deposit in a contract um, and you hold USDT, you hold USDT. And there's a lot of work that's been done to make sure that there is a one-to-one -one backing with the US dollar that sits somewhere. And as long as everybody's maintaining that, and as long as that stays on track, then, um, uh, and there's proof of those reserves, then uh, your cash is, is safe. Um, there were some shenanigans going on over the weekend when USDC, I believe, depegged. But um, uh, hopefully the system will continue to improve to make that better. So all in all, I think it bodes really well for crypto. I think that um, the challenge is what's going to be good for crypto over the next six months is going to be bad for uh, regular everyday people, because I don't think the economy, just personally, I don't think the economy is going to get better. I think if we're starting to see systemic problems at banks, that things are going to get a little worse for people personally before they get better. So it's hard to be, you know, jumping up and down excited about what happened over the weekend, especially when um, so many regular people are going to be imp normal everyday humans are going to be impacted by um the lack of trust and the systemic problems that the financial system has um important to remember that all in all <laughs> everything is uh, a store of value and it's only has value because humans value it um so um we'll see how that plays out moving forward um, but I am excited overall at the potential for uh, expanding uh, DeFi, expanding the ecosystem. I'm really excited about the how we are trying to not solve the same problems that everybody else solves, but we are trying to like find really niche problems that we can dive in and um, just take over that space. Um, because there are so many problems to solve. Um, we've been having problems dealing with coin market cap, as an example. Um, you go in and you submit a ticket to get something changed, and if you don't thread that needle exactly right, uh, it takes three or four more conversations before you can get something done. And it doesn't matter what it is over there. Um, uh, something gets messed up. Something uh, takes longer than it should. 
Um, there are companies that have total domination over information spaces um, that uh, shouldn't be happening. We're not going to compete there. Um, but there are other ways in terms of managing uh, token listings, managing your markets, managing your portfolio, um, all of these things um, where we can fill in unique solutions uh, are going to be fun to go after. So I'm very excited about the opportunities that it presents when um, the banking, traditional banking, you look at it and go, well, why the hell do I have to wait an entire weekend for my money to hit my bank account? And then why is a bank allowed to um, calculate my withdrawals before they deposit that check that I put in on Friday? And so now I've got $175 in uh, overdraft fees. Um, and they calculate it that way because it benefits them more than it benefits you. All that kind of stuff is nonsense. Um, uh, what I don't think should happen and what I think the government is going to try to push at various levels are central bank digital currencies. Um, I don't, I'm not for that. Um, I don't think anybody in the space should be for that. I don't think the government uh, should try to cut out the middleman in the process by having a central bank currency. I think it should only exist to help clearing houses and banks uh, like it does today. But I feel like um, the government is pushing towards a digital dollar so that it can have direct access to your transactions. And I think that that is a big problem. So we'll see where things go. Um, the fallout from this past weekend is going to be felt on a number of regulatory levels for the next uh, several months, if not years. And um, I'm interested to see what happens there and how we can respond. Overall, I think it's good for crypto, though. Um, I'll shut up now. And uh, if anybody has any technical questions, any comments on any stuff that happened over the weekend any uh any questions from that happy to answer anything about the tech and and where we're going see a bunch of familiar faces in here and some new folk as well good to see y'all oh we got a question in the chat um what's the status of lunar.io so uh we're working on uh, getting the website updated um it's been a long process um I'm not the world's greatest designer. Uh, we do happen to have a lot of um, fantastic assets um, to be able to use for that. Um, been working on um, restructuring the website to be able to um, have a product section uh, where we can focus on all the individual products that we're launching. Um, each one of those products is going to have its own core website. So Lunar.io is going to kind of be the hub in a hub and spoke network of um, websites that help outline the product, um, websites that help outline the foundation and what it does, um, and the directors, and then the um, kind of centralized blog for um, all of the updates on where everything else is going. Um, I would really like to have the, the lunar.io is kind of the last thing that needs to get updated in order for us to really start marketing in the way we would like um, because everybody needs to have a place they can go to to understand uh, the new products. Lunar Mint isn't on there. The Lunar Portfolio app is not clearly defined on there. Uh, we haven't separated out the difference between the Omni Wallet and Portfolio. All of those kinds of things that have happened in the last six months that need to get updated. Um, and then the how to buy section is just a, a cluster uh, on uh, a number of levels. And so um, I've been working to get that cleaned up, working with the team to be able to get new content in there. Um, I would, my body wants to give you folks a time frame. I'm going to tell you I want it done as soon as possible. And it's really now that the market maker's done, it's really the last thing that has to get done in order for us to be able to move forward on uh, spreading the word and getting new holders. And so uh, you can understand from that perspective, um, it's a major driver of volume and therefore a very high priority for me. Um, the challenge has been just the the 24 hours in a day and the requirement for sleep. So um, uh, I'd like to get it done very, very soon. Um, I'm hoping to have major traction on that to announce um, next week. 
uh, whether we're done next week or whether we have major forward motion. I don't want to like hold it back until um, it's done. Like I want to, I'm shipping updates in pieces as they go. Um, so hopefully I'll have more to talk about next week. That is, of course, as long as the contract, as long as the contract upgrade goes well. Uh, so, um, and it should, so not worried about that. Thanks for that, uh, Miski. Appreciate you. Any other questions? Nope. Alrighty then. Well, uh, and if that's, uh, if that's it for everybody, uh, really appreciate everybody, uh, coming by. Uh, we've been shipping a lot of stuff in the last two weeks. We'll ship a lot of stuff in the next two weeks, so we'll continue moving uh, everything forward. I appreciate your support. Um, we are um, just on the precipice of having all of our public uh, information updated enough that uh, hopefully you folks can be confident to start uh, spreading the good word about Lunar again. And um, and uh, we have an aggressive ship schedule, so you folks have seen it every every week. We have new things on on the deck to ship. Um, we added a bunch of new tasks on the update this week, so you're going to see a lot of purple, um, and then uh, you'll see that start to move to green, and we'll tack some more things on in there. So um, all we do is ship, folks, all the time, shipping utility and value for all of our wonderful lunar dow holders so appreciate you thank you so much for your continued support and please get, can, keep that feedback coming yes thank you guys for joining us thank you for taking the time to speak to us too mj we appreciate it um you guys have a wonderful day that was before you know renix renix that i said all i do is um shit um <laughs> I did not say that. Um, no. There was a fantastic um, ad. I don't remember if, was, if you folks remember in the United States, um, there was like a, if it was JC Penny or something else, um, and it was on public TV, it was great. Um, it was talking about um, being able to, to buy something and then have it shipped to your house, shipped to your house. And as just people saying, I just shipped my pants. And some, some guy jumps on a bed in the store and goes, I just shipped my bed. Uh, it was, yeah, well, uh, I'll find the, I'll find the video and post it, uh, in the main chat. It was a pretty funny commercial, but no, I did not say that we, we ship every week. Um, I hope everybody does the other thing every day. If you don't see a doctor, that's all I have. It was the perfect ending note, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> ends with a smile, right? So keep it weird, people. Let's keep it weird. All right. Yes, absolutely. I support this. <laughs> All right, you guys. You have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> uh, take it easy, everybody. <laughs>